guys, good afternoon. It's me. Uh, it's been a wonderful day. It's been a lovely day. Um, God just brought me through something and I wanted to share it with you. Um, the way God works with me with my messages is usually he starts to give me an inkling of something like a few days prior. And I'll start to write down whatever God puts in my heart and wait until he gives me the rest of the message and usually the rest of that message comes through a personal experience um, or a personal encounter and a few days ago God started speaking to me about preparation for our purpose and he likened it to running a marathon so this message is called marathon man um, preparation for your purpose a lot of the times God has put something so wonderful on the inside of us. Um, he calls you into ministry. He tells you to write a book. He tells you you're gonna be a doctor or a lawyer. And it's so wonderful and we get so excited and we're like, that's it. I found my passion, I found my purpose. Um, but so often um, we get ahead of ourselves and um, Guess what, guys? You can't be a doctor without going through several years of schooling and preparation and learning to be a doctor, right? You can't just become a lawyer. A lot of studying, a lot of exams and tests um, that you have to pass before you're qualified, right? You don't just show up into court and say, well, God told me I was going to be a lawyer. So here I am, give me a case. Right guys, it's not how it works. God's work in us is, it's like a marathon. Nobody just wakes up one day and runs 26.2 miles or 26.3 miles. It just doesn't happen. Matter of fact, if you did, um, it'd be quite dangerous. Um, there'd be consequences, it wouldn't, work out for you and I'm sure after you tried to run that 26.2 or 3 miles without any preparation um, you'd never ever want to try to do it again and so I started looking up God well what does it take to prepare for a marathon and the information I found it was like you know it's impossible to successfully run a marathon unless you train and in order to train for it you have to start putting in the work or the effort towards it three to six times a week. So you gotta do it all week. You have to put effort into it all week. And um, not only do you have to start running, right? You have to start running a little bit at a time. Three miles, then five miles, then seven miles, then 12 miles then 15 miles, however it is. You just don't start running 26.2 miles. You have to pace yourself. Not only do you have to pace yourself, you have to change your diet. Um, you have to eat differently. You've got to change your hydration. You've got to start to strengthen your muscles. You have to do strength training, right? There's a lot of things that go in to preparing to run a marathon. And today God wanted me to talk to you about slow down. Sure, there's um, a purpose for you and there's an end point for you, but um, it's an end point. We, when we start to first learn to swim, right? We don't learn to swim, pass the test, and then go dive in the middle of the ocean. Why? Because we're not prepared to go swimming in the middle of the ocean. We just pass the test. God had to bring me through some things today concerning my purpose, um, concerning what he called me into. Um, he called me into ministry. Um, at first it was very scary and then it was very exciting and then I started to run the race and then I got ahead of myself, right? Um, I was trying to run the marathon but I hadn't put in all of the work. He told me, Echo, there's a book in you. And, and you're gonna write it. And um, he didn't say you're gonna write it today. He didn't say you're gonna write it right now. 
uh, he said, there's a book in you and you're going to write it and I'm going to prepare you. I don't know how many times in the Bible it says wait on the Lord. It's a lot. Whenever God refers to himself as doing something good for you or speaking to you or wanting good for you, I tend to find that there's that phrase wait because he's going to tell you something but then wait because then he's going to prepare you for that something. In the Bible, in Isaiah 40 and 31, it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strengths. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There we have it. That's Bible. But it starts with, but they that wait on the Lord. You got to wait on the Lord to hear from the Lord. And you have to wait on the Lord to renew your strength before you mount up on wings as eagles. Before you fly over that mountain, you got to wait on God. And he's going to show you how to do it. I just, we're ahead of ourselves. We're ahead of our call. We're ahead of our time. Our passion is beautiful. Our excitement is beautiful. But sometimes, because we lacked preparation, we're gonna crash and we're gonna burn. Now, there's not a problem with that, you guys, because I've never known a single successful person that didn't become successful through ways of failure. Truthfully, um, ask any overnight success. They became an overnight success, and I bet you they'll tell you, I was unprepared. I was overwhelmed. And then I burnt out because it was far more than I was prepared and ready to handle. But those experts, right? Those actors who've been doing it forever, working and studying on their craft, now they're head of the box office. They can tell you a lot of do's, a lot of don'ts, and a lot of failures on how they got there. Guys, God wants to do the same thing in us. There's a ministry in you. There's a book in you. There's a doctor in you. There's a lawyer in you. There's a self-help group in you. There is a successful future in you. But it takes preparation. We got to do the work. We got to do the work. I was on Facebook today and I saw the most beautiful meme. It was so beautiful. It really spoke to my heart as to what I was going through. And it says, you gotta love the struggle just as much as you love the reward. So many people want the peak, but they hate the climbing. You want the success, but you don't want the struggle. See, that's the problem. People wanna grow, but they don't wanna go through the growing pains. Guys, we gotta go through the growing pains to get to where God wants us to go. Um, Pastor Kim says it so beautifully. Everybody wants to be a diamond, but nobody wants to be cut. You can't be successful without preparation. You can't be successful without, you know, without pace. You gotta pace yourself. You have to be prepared. You have to go through some things. So I guess what I'm telling you today is slow down and wait. All good things from the Lord come with waiting. They come with patience, but they come with expectation. They come with faith, right? Faith is the evidence of things unseen. Um, but the so, something of things hoped for. Um, I'm not perfect, you guys. I haven't memorized the Bible. I've hid it in my heart. Um, I know what it means to me. Um, but faith is the things that we don't see, but then they, they come to happen. We hope for them without evidence of them actually being there. That's what we have to keep. We have to keep the faith. We have to hold on to the promise that we know what God put in our hearts, that we know what God or who God told us we were going to be. And then we have to have patience and preparation and wait and hear the Lord. Um, in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, it says God's never going to give us 
more to handle than we can bear. And not only that, he's going to give us a way to endure it. So if we're going through too much and we can't endure it, chances are we haven't given it to the Lord. Or maybe we're in a place where the Lord doesn't want us to be. But if you're going through it and you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling the challenge is too much, um, I would check your pace. Maybe you're running just a little ahead of the Lord. And, and today, I, you know, I, I received that message. Maybe you're running just a little ahead of the Lord. Slow down. All of these beautiful things that God told you, that they are yours. Hope for them, believe in them, have faith in them, wait for them. But you got to learn how to be successful at them. You have to go through the pace. You have to go through the wisdom. You have to go through the trials and the errors. Because where you're going, you're going to need all this experience. And in order to get the experience, you got to slow down. you got to slow down your pace, right? So I hope this message really helped you. Um, I hope it touched your heart. I hope it helped you to know that there's a purpose in you, but there's a pace to that purpose. And it's God's pace. It's not your pace. So if we can all just receive re realignment, right, and um, instruction, and slow down to get to where we want to go, the ending is just going to be more beautiful than we ever imagined. It's going to be amazing. And when you get there, you're going to have all the experience and all the wisdom and all the understanding and all the knowledge and all of the failures that you needed to be successful. So that's my message, guys. That's it. It's pretty simple today. I hope it blessed you. I hope it touched you. Um, tell a friend. Pass it along. I love you guys. Talk to you soon.